What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares! <laughs> That's right, we're back at it on a month-long journey throughout the nightmares. Now remember, I'm taking a look at 31 foreign horror films in chronological order. And we've now reached a film that I've low-key been really excited to check out ever since I've heard of its existence. It's the unofficial spin-off to the Paranormal Activity series, simply called Paranormal Activity Tokyo Drift, or Tokyo Night. Paranormal Activity Tokyo Night takes us to Japan as we follow a brother and sister who began filming day in and day out on their personal video cameras when things begin to go bump in the night. Turns out something must have followed the sister after she took a vacation to America and some kind of tragic event took place that connects this film to Paranormal Activity 1. So I have heard about this film for years, probably ever since the year it came out or shortly thereafter, but I was always confused about its existence because it depends on where you find information about the movie, but it's often called Paranormal Activity 2, Tokyo Night, even though we already have a Paranormal Activity 2 here, which continues the story seen in the first movie. But the best way to look at this movie is it's a spin-off, and you'll have an even easier time calling it a completely unconnected spin-off at that, because it doesn't really follow canon rules seen in the real series. It gets away with it though, because both Paranormal Activity 2 and 3 are prequels, while this is technically a sequel. But once Paranormal Activity 4 rolls around, the canon gets mucked up entirely. There is a connection though, at least the film attempts to have a connection to the American films, and their attempt is fair. But past that, they don't really try to make the film their own. Everything else in the movie is literally a beat-for-beat -beat remake of the American film, more or less. In Japan, when you have paranormal horror films like this, whether you're talking about Juwan or Ringu, repetition is part of the game. It's all about history repeating itself, you know, a curse that basically acts like a plague. And when you compare it to things like Juwan, it does seem to fit more in line with what they're looking for across the pond. But being a fan of the Paranormal Activity series and the legend as it is, this is obviously just a copy-paste job, and there's just really no creativity or originality to be found here. They wanted to tell the story in a way that replicated the first film, even down to how they utilized their found footage angles and cuts in the editing room. And maybe it works for them. But for me, I was bored to tears because we did it better. And I'm not just saying that because I love our movie. We had a really good grasp on tension building particularly, as well as pacing. Our film had a very good pace, and nothing felt repetitious whatsoever. It all flowed together pretty well. Tokyo Night felt repetitious. They'd have those, you know, night shots where the camera is stable watching everybody sleep, and then they'd wake up, but there would be no scene in between it, and then it would simply jump to the next night and then the next morning. I found that weird. And there definitely seem to be more nights documented here than the American film. It's just an overabundance of night scenes. And because it's so repetitious, the audience might start feeling like, where is this movie going? Is it ever going to end? I knew more or less that because they were copying the same story, it would probably end the same way. And for the most part, it does, but they do slightly alter the ending a little bit. And I did like what they did there to change the ending. After all, it was the only real thing in the movie they changed. It needed more of that, but sadly it didn't have it. It actually just kind of makes me sad personally because I love the Paranormal Activity series. I find it something that gives me a good you know, amount of chills even after having seen it a million times. And I always know what's coming up. It just, it keeps me engaged. This didn't. I found this to be unscary unengaging and all around a waste of energy because to be perfectly honest with you the film isn't bad on its own you know it's not great but it's also not bad because they did what they set out to do which is great but because it's basically the same story done in the same way there's no real reason to watch this movie it adds literally nothing new to the franchise so tell you what i'm gonna be rating this movie a D plus letter grade, final overall score of 54%. 54 out of 100 possible stars. 
I want to be positive here and say that the film had its moments because its simplicity and amateurism still helps it feel like paranormal activity is supposed to feel like before they went all crazy and they added things like witches and time travel and superpowers or whatever it is that they did at the end of the day. But it also was mostly just a copy paste job that didn't really dare to do much more with the material that at the time was new and young and hardly touched on yet. But alas, it is what it is. Guys, have you seen Paranormal Activity Tokyo Night? If you have, where do you rank it as a Paranormal Activity film? As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next film for interpreting the scares. And uh, until then, peace out.